Okay, welcome. Uh, I'm Tony Guerra. I'm a doctor of pharmacy and I wrote a book called Drug Names Decoded and I tend to come along a certain uh, things with the language of uh, drugs and one of them is the atinol mystery. Why do English speaking patients and providers mispronounce and misspell the beta blocker atenolol as atinol? Well, to get an answer like this, it's easier to look at it in context. So we want to look at a number of errors and if we can find some kind of pattern between the errors, it's a lot easier to see uh, what the mistake is or what the grammar is uh, in the one error. Uh, so first, uh, my background, uh, I have an undergraduate degree in English and I also have some small bit of training in linguistics, but we're going to use uh, the humanities in solving this STEM issue. Uh, STEM, if you don't know, is science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, first, uh, we have to understand prosody. Uh, prosody is a poetic meter. Where does the accent sit uh, in a particular word? Is it on the first syllable, the second syllable, even the third syllable? Uh, we're going to take a little bit of linguistics uh, with phonology, how things are pronounced, uh, or morphology, uh, how or what makes up the word, and then a little bit of a look at a foreign language in terms of Spanish. So these are the three different uh, things I'm going to go over. First, what are the mispronunciations? Uh, second, what is similar about each of these errors? And then why are they mispronounced? Okay. So first, atenolol becomes atenol. Metformin becomes metaformin. Metoprolol becomes metoprolol, and simvastatin becomes simvastin. So I found these errors all over the place. Uh, StudentDoctor.net, uh, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, where someone had typed in uh, these drugs or some of them. Uh, Quizlet, uh, the flashcards that are meant to help you on your exams. Uh, YouTube videos, and even uh, forum in the United Kingdom. So this is all over the world uh, where English speakers will make these particular mistakes. And the explanations that are in these forums include prescriptive judgments like the patient might have had a poor education or did, lacked medical knowledge. But if we take a descriptive explanation and describe what's happening maybe we can get to the answer and maybe it has nothing to do with education and medical knowledge and we're going to find that's the case. So first, where should the accent be? What are the mispronunciations? In atenolol, it should be on the second syllable. In metformin, it should be on the second syllable. In metoprolol, it's on the second syllable. And in simvastatin, it's actually on the third syllable. But we're going to see what happens when we change to the mispronunciation. We see that atinol now has the accent on the first syllable. Metaformin is now on the first syllable. Met metoprolol is on the first syllable. And then simvastin is also on the first syllable. So what's similar about these errors? Well, English speakers prefer words that have the accent on the first syllable, especially as they're learning the language. As kids, we changed words to start with accents, and we would just drop the beginning of the word. So instead of saying banana, uh, my children will say nana. And instead of saying computer, they'll just say pewter. And this is much more comfortable for them to use that accent in the first part of the word. Also, second, uh, English is mostly a closed syllable language which means the syllables end in consonants, where something like Spanish is mostly an open syllable language, where the syllable ends in vowels. And I'm going to give you some pronunciations of the word Spanish in Spanish and English and see how uh, this works out. So in Espanol, you see the first two syllables end in vowels, the E and the A. That's how a native Spanish speaker would pronounce it. But an American speaking English without any Spanish background might say Espanol and what the American has done is taken the S and added a consonant to the E and added a consonant to the A to make it more comfortable for them. 
The converse is true also. Spanish is how an American English speaker would say Spanish. And you see the consonant on the N, and that's correct. But a native Spanish speaker might struggle with that because they're used to having all these vowels. So they would put an E in front to make Espanish or Espanish, having the first syllables end in vowels. Both of them are doing the same thing. They're just converting the foreign language word to something that is more comfortable and more appropriate for their native tongue. So why are they mispronounced? Well, we can see that there's going to be patterns. Atenolol becomes atenol, and the accent has changed from the second syllable to the first. You also change from one closed syllable with a consonant to two closed syllables. And that is much more important or much more comfortable for a native English speaker. Metaformin was an error I heard a native Spanish speaker making, and that would make sense to add an A, to add this open s syllable so that we have another vowel. English speakers also make this mistake, but we have English words like metaphor, metaphysics, metacognition, and things like that, and maybe that's why they made the mistake. Metoprolol becomes metoprolol. Again, we're changing that accent from the second syllable to the first. And we're going from two open syllables, one closed syllable, to two closed syllable, one open syllable. A much more comfortable thing for an English speaker to use. Simvastin from simvastatin has changed the accent from the unaccented first two syllables to an accented first syllable. And we had an one open syllable and two closed syllables to just two closed syllables. Again, much more comfortable for a native English speaker. So the algorithm, what we can expect, English speakers will try to move the accented syllable to the first position and they'll try to create more closed syllables with consonants. Spanish speakers, or maybe Romance language speakers in general, uh, Romance doesn't mean love, romantic, it means from Rome or Latinate, uh, such as Spanish, Italian, and French. Uh, they're going to try to create more open syllables. And we have a lot of diversity, so this is important to know. So what's the big deal? Well, atinol now sounds like patinol. Atinol is an antihypertensive. Patinol is an anti-allergy medication. Metaformin doesn't really have similar words, but when you hear a provider use it incorrectly, the patient loses a bit of trust in that provider. Metaprolol, an antihypertensive, is now similar to metaproteranol, a bronchodilator. And simvastin, an antihyperlipidemic, something for cholesterol lowering, is now similar to avastin, a monoclonal antibody used with cancer treatments. So we can see that these conversions uh, make the drugs look like other drugs which have nothing to do with what they do. So just want to recognize that we have a diverse healthcare environment. It warrants research uh, using language tools found in the humanities disciplines, uh, and that we should use med we should view medication pronunciation from a descriptive viewpoint, uh, without making these social prescriptive judgments, saying that the patient is not educated or something like that, because really the answer to the question is why do patients and providers use atinol instead of atenolol? Well, it's because their first language is English.